Now we can see that the deep state, the corporate media, they are still pushing their agenda. I mean, they haven't given up. And yesterday we talked about how they're trying to divide and conquer. And this is the strategy that they use every single time. And of course, what they're doing right now is they're trying to make Trump look like a racist, look like he's rooting for the white supremacists, the neo-Nazis, that he agrees with what happened there. And if you really listen to what he has been saying, is that he wanted the facts, he wanted to see what was really going on, that both sides are to blame. And But the, the corporate media right now, they basically don't want to hear that. They're driving the narrative. And we've seen this with Russian collusion. Actually, have you heard anything about Russian collusion? That just disappeared, huh? This was such a hot topic for, what, many, many months, and it just completely disappeared because we learned that it was completely fake, phony, and false. Well, since that's fake, phony, and false, they had to come up with something else. And they're using this and pushing the agenda. And I notice what the corporate media is doing to continually push the idea that this is what it's all about. They bring on individuals that are members of the KKK. They bring on neo-Nazis. They interview them and they try to show the people that see these people. This is what Trump is. And this is what they're really trying to do. And if you really listen to what he said, he condemns all of this. And he wanted the facts. He just didn't want to come out and say anything. This was a very new um, event that just occurred. And we can see that the corporate media, they didn't care about that. And they don't care about that. They're going to keep up their narrative. And they're trying to take those white supremacists, the neo-Nazis and whatever other hate groups there are out there, and they're trying to bring that and melt it together with Trump. Now, they're also saying these white nationalists, these neo-Nazis, they're also Putin lovers. So they're trying to take these individuals and say these individuals love Russia, love Putin. So, you know, it's all part of the whole entire narrative that they're putting together that, you know, Trump colluded with Russia. He's a white nationalist, neo-Nazi. And we can see that this is all they have left. Look what they had to pull out. Neo-Nazis, KKK, white supremacists, they had to pull all of this out to try to create this illusion that this is happening. Now, they're trying to pit one side against the other. We should not fall for this. America needs to come together and point the finger at the real enemy and it's not the left it's not the right they're using this to create this and yes people are believing it and they're taking sides and we can see that they're going after you know the confederate statues and they want to take them down and they're you know they want to get rid of them they don't want anyone to see it and trump made a comment that okay if we take down you know these statues what about george washington he was a slave owner what about thomas jefferson he was also a slave owner. Well, you have to remember, throughout history, this was the norm. I mean, let's go back in time. I mean, think about, and I'm not saying this against any religion or anything like this, but every religion, every society had those periods of time. It's part of their history. It's part of what makes them. And just by removing it, it doesn't make it go away. What we need to do is to show it and learn from it. Yes, at that time, we had George Washington. We had Thomas Jefferson. They tried to make things better. Yes, they had slaves at that time. Today, that should have never happened. But during that period, that's the way it was. There's nothing we can do to go back and change that. But these individuals, they did do certain things that were good. And yes, everyone is going to do things that aren't so good. We're all human. Nobody is perfect. And during the time in history, well, those things were the norm. 
I'm not saying they're right, but that's the way it was. I mean, they had other slaves going back further in time. And we had other things with religion. Everyone just doesn't drop religion because of what happened in the past. We look at it, we learn from it, we understand it. But if you just remove everything, it doesn't make it go away. It's like burning books. Do you really think if you just burn the books, everything just disappears and you don't have to see it anymore? No. Again, we have a country, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, hate speech, nice speech, it doesn't matter. It's freedom of speech. No one can tell you what's good or bad. You might not want to listen to something that's completely different, but everyone has the right to say what's on their mind, even if you don't like it, and even if you do like it. But when we look closely at what has happened here, and we look at Jason Kessler, the white supremacist leader, and we look at this individual, well, he was a former Obama supporter, an Occupy Wall Street protester, who did a 180 and became a Trump supporter. Now, in 2011, he worked for CNN. He was an assignment editor. And now we are to believe that he's a neo-Nazi white supremacist. So, Jason Kessel, the leader of the Unite Right, is suspect. And what about his group? Well, there is buzz on the internet that the Unite the Right is a George Soros-funded honeypot psyop of Antifa goons disguised as Nazis. And there is more and more evidence which shows that George Soros, once again, is trying to push his agenda and this goes along with the elite, the deep state, where they're using the corporate media as their mouthpiece, like they always do, to drive this narrative. And this is exactly what we see happening today. Just like we saw them drive the narrative of Russian collusion. They had all this evidence, they have all this information, and guess what? It was all propaganda. It went absolutely nowhere and then we had project veritas go undercover and had individuals actually say yeah this is all completely made up and now today what do we hear nothing crickets the same thing is happening now with charlottesville they're using this and they're trying to build it up and get everyone going to try to get Trump impeached. And remember, if this doesn't work, their last option is most likely an assassination attempt. And they will move to this area. I mean, George Soros said he will not allow Trump to fulfill his term as president. So we can see right now they are pushing their agenda very hard they want the country divided and they're trying to push this as hard as they possibly can now we can see that those in power they are still pushing their goal to get into venezuela now sergey lavrov he was speaking with his bolivian counterpart when the issue of venezuela arose. Bolivia is one of Venezuela's closest regional allies, along with Cuba. And Sergei Lavrov responded to the threats made by uh, Trump against Caracas when the U.S. threatened to use military force against uh, Venezuela. He said that these threats are crazy, and a threat to a sovereign country is ridiculous. He went on to say that we are united in the need to overcome the existing disagreements in the country by peaceful means through a nationwide dialogue as soon as possible without any external pressure, not to mention the unacceptability of the threats of military intervention in internal affairs of this country. So we see right now that 
once again Russia is stepping in now they want each and every country to basically work out their problems they don't want the United States coming in the deep state the elite coming in and making the decision for the people which they've done many many times before and what is happening right now is that countries are waking up the world is changing China Russia they are working with each other they're bringing in other countries the BRIC nations are banding together and they're saying you know something we can now stand up to the deep state you're not going to push us around anymore and you can see that Russia and China they are really going out there and saying listen back off the country will decide on their own and they're continually doing this they're doing it with North Korea they're doing it with Syria they're doing it with Venezuela and we can see that the deep state they're not going to give up right now US and Japanese fighter jets they conducted a joint air maneuver southwest of the Korean Peninsula now this was scheduled it was planned for the 21st through the 31st of August so this is going to start this is called the Ulchi Freedom Guardian it was a joint exercise and they're going to be using the B1B Lancer bombers and of course even though it was planned it was planned to provoke North Korea that was that's what this was all about and we can see that they're still trying their little tactics but it's not working anymore they're even saying that listen if you know the United States goes in and thank God we didn't because North Korea has chemical weapons because there was an analysis done in 2011 and the United States concluded and again this is a guess because they don't know for sure that North Korea has 2,500 to 5,000 tons of chemical weapons. Just like they said, Syria was using chemical weapons when they got rid of all their chemical weapons. So they're still using the same exact tactics, they're just using it with a different country. Nothing's changed. They're still doing the same exact thing over and over and over again. Now what's very interesting is that the, Char the Chinese Foreign Ministry is claiming that German Foreign Minister Sigma Gabriel is backing China's proposal for a double freeze as a route out of the Korean crisis. Now the double freeze is North Korea will freeze its ballistic missile and nuclear weapons program and the US will freeze the military exercises it routinely carries out in the Korean Peninsula with South Korea, Japan and the rest. Now North Korea says they will agree to this if the United States goes ahead with it. The U.S., well, they haven't agreed to this as of yet. Now, the obstacle to implementing the double freeze lies with Washington. Trump is going to have to say we agree. Now, I think he should use Tillerson to do this since Tillerson is playing the good cop. He should say, listen, we need to have diplomacy. We're going to freeze it if North Korea agrees to this. And I believe that China and Russia, they're both going to agree. Now, if you notice, Germany is now siding with Russia and China. And we're going to see a lot of European nations because of what the deep state the elite have done with sanctions they're moving away from the West and moving towards the East because they're starting to wake up the world is changing right now the days of the globalists the deep state the elite they're coming to an end and we can see this in Syria we see that the Tiger forces they have been clearing central Syria from the Islamic State we see that the Syrian army well, they're advancing towards the U.S. base in southern Syria, and the U.S. has been firing warning, warning shots in their direction, saying, you know, stay away. But this is the Tanf crossing where they're approaching because they've been clearing the entire way. They've almost rid Damascus of the terrorist groups. And what's very interesting is that since the Trump administration halted the covert CIA program of arming moderate rebels and since Russia and Syria 
have removed the Islamic State, Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra, and liberated many, many towns and villages, you know what's been happening? All those refugees, they're coming back to Syria. The International Organization for Migration said that nearly 603,000 Syrian refugees have come back to their cities and villages in the first seven months of this year. And there are many more that will be heading back because all these people want is to return home. So this shows us that since the arming and the funding of the moderate rebels, since the destruction of these terrorist groups, these freedom fighters that the CIA calls them, that the deep state calls them, that the elite calls them. Since all of this is basically disappearing, the people are able to come back to Syria. So the refugee problem, like we've been saying for a very long time, has been caused by the CIA the terrorist groups and these freedom fighters. The people never wanted this. The people were living a peaceful life, earning a living, going to work, raising a family, until the deep state and the elite came in and destroyed their way of life. This happened in Libya, Lebanon, Somalia, Sudan, Iraq, Lebanon, Ukraine. They destroyed the countries, they created this refugee problem, and like we said before, once these puppet governments disappear, once the people take back their country, remove the United States, the deep state, from their countries, guess what? The people are going to come back, and this refugee crisis that they created disappears. And this is what we see happening right now. Many of the countries across the world, they are banding together, making alliances, and now they're pushing back against the deep state, against the elite, saying no more. And people are now returning to their countries. Now, is this all said and done? No, because the deep state, the elite, they still exist. They're still pushing their narrative. They're trying to do whatever they possibly can to keep their power, but every day it withers away. Every day it disappears. And eventually what's going to happen, once the funding is cut off, the dollar is no longer the reserve currency, this is the war currency, guess what? They will cease to exist, maybe in small little groups, but they will have no power.